In times of illness, we are drawn closer to those in need and endure tragedy through gestures of compassion and concern. The global calamity of COVID-19 has not just brought death, it has also separated us from each other and from those we love. As a hospice physician who has spent decades at the bedside of dying patients, I have come to realize that no matter how physically alone patients are, few of them die alone. End of life is more than a medical endeavor. Dying is more than the physical manifestations we observe. When medicine can no longer defy illness, nature assumes its rightful place, and dying becomes what has always been, a human experience. It is not just the closing of a life, but a meaningful vantage point that draws people inward. Towards the end of life, people often recall the best parts of living. For some, this occurs consciously through conversations. For others, it comes unconsciously through dreams. The dying process is about progressively deeper sleep and alternating levels of alertness. These states are not moments of confusion or delirium. In our studies, the dying describe them as comforting, subjective experiences that bring clarity and insight and a peaceful end of life. These experiences include vivid dreams. The first video is of our patient Jeannie, who had pre-death experiences that were comforting, vivid, and felt. Her experiences don't deny death, but reaffirmed the life that she led. They lessened her fear of dying. When I walked in one morning, she said, I had the most amazing dream. And uh, I said, tell me about it. And she said it was so detailed and so real that she felt that it, it, it was actually happening. And I was laying in bed and people were walking very slowly by me. The right hand side, I didn't know, but they were all very friendly and they touched my arm or my hand when they went by. I felt good. I felt good to see some people. And the other ones didn't bother me either. <laughs> I have seen my mother recently more. I can't say that my mother and I got along all those years, but we made up for it at the end. And she would say, she said to me, I'm not crazy, Jewel. And I said, I don't think you are, Mom. It's okay. So when I told my family that uh, I was happy about it, and that's what they asked. How does it make you feel? Well, I feel good about it. I feel the comfort and the peace that some of these experiences brought to her, gave her exactly what she needed to, um, to pass on. Uh, for me, um, it affirmed that you're not alone when you die. At end of life, people rarely share existential insights or exuberant pronouncements. They don't have epiphanies. Instead, they talk of love in a way that restores their sense of connectiveness, of being made whole. Elderly patients experience the return of the mother or father they lost in childhood. Women cradle babies long lost to their touch. They visualize a world where their best relationships define their purpose and their true accomplishments. The following video is of our 13-year-old patient, Jessica. Children often lack language for death and may not have known a person who has died. Jessica dreamt of a pet that had passed and whose return meant that she was not alone and that she was loved. My dreams that I have are good dreams now which I dream about my old dog, Shadow, that has passed away. And I see him, and he's in a good place, and he's running, he's having fun. But then again, he runs away, and I never see him again. Like, it's, I feel like it's his meaning of saying goodbye. Occasionally, I have an occasionally where he comes to see me, to, to I have a feeling to have him say it's okay. That I'm, that I'm in a safe place and I'm in heaven. And I um, usually just try to lay there in my bed and try to reenact that dream uh -huh. and just think about what just had happened to wake me up. Yes. But I do get afraid because I see how dark my room is and I like look on the ground and the one night I happened to see like a long black thing yeah. and that was him by my bed. I feel that that meaning is uh, a meaning of love.
mm-hmm. and that they're there and they're always going to protect you. As a doctor, I do not need to be able to explain these end-of-life experiences to my patients, nor interfere medically. I've learned to show reverence for the strength of the human spirit in its endless quest to heal what is harmed or broken. While we may envision ventilators and IVs, the dying often experience love, presence, and even touch of predeceased loved ones. They revisit the memories of being held and cherished, the culmination of a life rather than its demise. The dying teach us that the best parts of having lived are never truly lost. The lesson seems clear. The totality of our human experience can never be defined or reduced by its last moments. Often the richness of life and our relationships are found within simple and symbolic gestures. Sometimes it's just about the sauce. Patrick didn't cook with with one single exception of making his grandmother sauce which he did, I want to say, about every four, six, eight weeks through the entire 16 years I knew him. Patrick was the only member of his family that knows how to make the sauce. And for all the years I knew him, he insisted something was missing. Fast forward to this would be the Sunday before he passed. He woke up in the morning and I couldn't get him to eat. He wasn't hungry, total loss of appetite. And I'm like, baby, we gotta make you something for breakfast. What do you want? He goes, I'm full. I said, Pat, you had a snack pack pudding yesterday. You're not full. And he's like, oh, no. I ate with, with Nana Dolores last night. As real as I'm sitting here, he believed he made sauce with his grandmother the night before, said he could smell it, he could still taste it, he was full from it, and she showed him after all these years what he had done wrong, which is the very last step before you take it off the burner was to add a teaspoon of sugar. We spent the next seven and a half hours, because that's how long it takes, making his grandmother's sauce We made the sauce, he added the sugar. Last time Patrick ever ate. I think this is a man who is at peace and very honest, if if your last dream in life is about spaghetti sauce, there's nothing more peaceful than that.